His awesomeness is his responsibility. And God is always known for keeping his word. Am I right? Yeah. You can't accuse him of non support. Mm. <laughs> he always keeps his word, right? He always keeps his word. He does what he says he's going to do. And, um, oh Lord, well, anyway, I just say it like this. Um, the scripture says that God cannot lie. Did it say that? Yes. It said, God, who was sundry times and divers, sundry times and divers, uh, man has spoken to the prophets, spoke to us in time past by the prophets, has spoken to us in these last days by his son, right? Yes. Whom he appointed heir of all things. And when you look at the scriptures, and when the scripture says God cannot lie, and that he appointed his son, first of all, why can't God lie? Because whatever he says will happen. Because whatever he says will come to pass. <laughs> If it was a lie, when God said it, it's going to turn into the truth. <laughs> Y'all feel that? If, 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 if God, if you look outside and it's not raining and God said it's raining, you're going to say, Lord, it's not raining. You better look again. Because mm -hmm. if God said it, it's going to start happening. That's why he can't lie, because he's the creator. So he cannot lie. Right? The scripture says that everyone that maketh a lie. So you got to have the ingredients to make a lie. It's like making a cake. God don't have the ingredients in him to lie, so he can't lie. And when the ingredients are not in you to lie, then everything you say is going to be the truth. Am I right? Everything right. you say is going to be the truth. And that's the path that we should be on, that path of truth. So now, the scripture says in Genesis chapter 3, I want you to understand, people of God, there, last week, I think, a week before, whatever it was, I said that there's a famine, right? There's a famine. And what was the famine for? For the word. The famine was not for the word, it was for the hearing, the prophet said, the hearing of the word. So then, it's not a famine where there's no food. There's plenty of food, but there is no appetite. Are y'all here? Yes. There's plenty of food, but the people don't have the desire for the proper food. People desire what they want, and that's what humans do. Humans desire what their flesh wants. Tell me why. Who can tell me why? Why do we desire what our flesh wants? Because Wherever your treasure is, there will your heart be also. So basically, we want what we desire because we have treasured our own way, we treasured our own flesh, and because of that, now we have created a desire within ourselves. And that desire has become dominant in our life, and that desire is now ruling us. And sometimes we get so caught up in it that we can't pull away. We don't even know why we're doing what we're doing or why we're saying what we're saying. I wish I could stop, but I just can't stop. I don't know what's going on with me. Well, you created that path by your habits and by your actions. If you do something long enough, it'll become natural to you. It's a habit. It'll become a habit. And it takes a certain amount of time to create a habit. So if you would have stopped earlier, it may not be a habit. But now, don't you know it's harder to break a habit than it is to create one? Mm. Now you got to break a habit. And breaking it is more difficult than starting it. And, and, and the flesh, when we live in this flesh, then we have created a habit for years of doing something a certain way. And then when someone comes along and says, no, no, that's not right, we get upset. Mm -hmm. But you didn't get upset when the teacher taught you something. Why? You didn't get upset in kindergarten. You didn't get upset in first grade. Then start getting upset till you got about eighth and ninth grade when you thought you knew something. Mm -hmm. But when you were in kindergarten and the teacher told you something, you said, yes. You know why? Because he had the mind of a child. He that cometh to God must have the heart and mind of what a child. Why? Because a child's mind is malleable. Right? A child's mind is flexible. You can, you can still shape it. You can still form it. But us old Negroes, we know everything, and you can't shape or form my mind because I already know it. Therefore, you can't tell me nothing. I'm a man like you. I put my pants on the same way you do. How you gonna tell me something? I'm 60. By 60, I thought you were supposed to know everything. Yeah, right. <laughs> but I don't know everything. And my mind is still uh, formable or shapeable. One reason why is because I refuse to stop hearing the voice of God. When you don't hear nothing from God, I told a young lady once she, she was living upstairs from me and she was pounding on my door. She came downstairs pounding on the door. I'm like, man, what is going on? I thought it was the popo. -po. I opened up the door and there stood Tasha. And Tasha said, Apostle, Apostle, she's shaking. I'm thinking, oh, man, what's, what is going on? Maybe this guy upstairs, you know, her boyfriend's attacking her again because they fought, you know. Uh, anyway, so, so, um, 
So I was walking on time. She said, I was praying. She's crying. I was praying. And the Lord spoke to me, but he spoke to me in a very harsh voice. She said, it hurt. I'm afraid. What am I going to do? And I started laughing. She said, it's not funny. I said, it's very funny. Why is it funny? Because he's still talking. Y'all get that? He's still talking. If God is still talking, even if he's upset, even if he's yelling and screaming, guess what? He ain't done communicate with a brother yet. That means all I got to do is repent, get myself in place, and then the tone is going to change. Now right. y'all know that, brothers? Y'all know women get upset and get the yelling and screaming. All you got to do is change the atmosphere. Get on the knee. Get some new knee pads. The mother must wear out. Get some new ones. Change the atmosphere. And then the tone will change. The scripture said, a soft answer turns away wrath. Yes. All right. Genesis chapter 3. Let's see what the word is saying. Let me stop all that. We don't got somebody in trouble. Genesis chapter 3. Um, now, now notice, what we hear, let me say this to you, what you hear is dependent upon your location. Yes. If you don't have an amplifier, you know, people in the front may hear you, but people in the back might not. Why? Because of their distance. So what we hear is determined, or how we hear is determined on our location. So when you're not in the right location, you're not in the right place, you might not hear what God is saying clearly. There are people who think they're hearing from God, and they're not hearing from God at all because everything they're hearing is contrary to the Word of God. If you hear from God, the foundation of it is going to be in the Word of God. God ain't telling you to do something, and you got a, you a wife, and you got a man of God for a husband, but the Lord is always telling you what to do, and he ain't talking to your husband. And when he do talk to your husband, you say, well, I got to pray about it. What are you praying for, woman? If that's your husband and he's a man of God, you ain't got to pray. What you got to pray about is being submitted to God. Because when you submit to God, you listen to your husband. Especially if you're a man of God. Oh, Apostle, mess it up now. Well, I'm going to get in more trouble before it's over with. And now, thank, thank you, Tysha. Now, now, check this out. When we align ourselves with God, essentially, we are aligning ourselves with his word. Am I right or right? How can I say I'm in line with God? The scripture says, husband, love your wife. How much? Ask Christ for the church. But guess what? I ain't studying her. Yep. But I got to go run revival. Mm -hmm. You need to be running from revival, brother, or running to it, not to preach, but to get preached to. Y'all still here? Yeah. So then, because the word of God is going to bring me into alignment with the will of God. And the will of God is going to bring me into alignment with the word of God. It's a circle. Somebody said, Still, it's a circle. So we got to understand that whatever we hear somebody say or whatever we hear in our spirit, if we can't find it in the word of God, then it's not God. But what if I don't know the word of God? Then you need to begin to study the word of God. So you will know what it says. Am I right? All right. It's not an excuse. So we need to know the voice of God. Some of us don't even know his voice. We don't even know if God is talking, the devil is talking, or is your flesh just having a field day? You know, your flesh have a voice of its own. Then there's the voice of the enemy, which is the devil. Then there's the voice of God, which is the voice of the spirit, which is the voice of the word. You see, we got to be able to discern what voice we're hearing. If I'm hearing a voice that's telling me something that's not in line with God's word, then I'm not hearing from God. Are you hearing me, people of God? If I'm hearing a voice that's telling me not to support something that's of God, if I'm at a church, I should support that church financially. Why? Not because, not because, oh, the pastor. No, because if I'm there, look, if you go to McDonald's and eat, what you going to do? You're going to pay before you get your food. Amen. They're going to swap your card before they give you anything. Then they got the audacity. I'm going to tell you something. Some restaurants got the audacity to ask you for a tip before they give you your food. How you, I can't give you a tip yet. I don't even know how you're going to treat me. Right. They want a tip up front. Have y'all ever noticed that? You buy something from GoPuff. Y'all ever heard of GoPuff? You buy something from GoPuff, you get something, in, and they say, add tip. Even Amazon. You order from Whole Foods on Amazon. Add tip. Add tip? Yeah. What am I going to tip you for? You drop my food off next door. Yeah. Oh, man. And I'm tipping you. That's even worse now. Oh. Y'all have a brother. Tip. What did I say? Genesis 3. Yeah. Genesis 3. <laughs> We have to know that we're hearing from God, to hearing the right voice. And if you're not familiar with the voice of God, you won't know that it's God. You know, I heard, I don't know how true this is, but I heard that women know the voice of their children. 
They can be 10 children in the room crying, but they won't pay no attention until that 11th cry come out. Mm -hmm. There's, oh, oh, that's mine. Mm -hmm. Is that true? Yes. yes. Ladies with babies, is that true? Yes. That's true? Yes. Okay. Now, I'm, I'm, I heard that. I'm like, how do you know? They know the sound. My sheep know my voice. And a stranger, they will not follow. So they know the sound. Why? Because they have familiarized themselves with that sound. I saw a baby that was born. The same day the baby was born, the baby knew her name. Hmm. That baby knew her name. You don't remember Sister Hattie, do you? So you might be too. You remember Sister Hattie. Sister Hattie, my, she's my godmother. She had a baby. The baby's name, I think her name is Michelle. She's, I just saw her the last time I was in Wisconsin. And, and this baby, when Sister Hattie was pregnant with this baby, I can't remember, Michelle or Michelle, whatever her name is, she was talking to the baby, calling the baby's name. And she told me, she said, Brother James, speak to the baby. She knows your voice. And me like a dummy, hey baby, I'm talking to her stomach. Thinking since I had this baby, girl, she knows your voice, she knows Bishop's voice. And I'm like, okay. The day the baby was born, my dad and I go to the hospital to visit her. And the baby's in, the, uh, in her arms, but it's newborn, a few hours old. And I say, Michelle. And the baby goes, I almost ran. I said, this is demonic. I almost ran. That baby knew her name. She looked around. When I said, Michelle, she looked around. I said, oh, my God, what is going on? That is the miracle of God. That is the miracle of sound. She had become, that baby had become familiar with the sound of her name. And she wasn't even in the earth yet. So we have to become familiar with the sound of God's voice. If you don't know that it's God, then you are not familiar with who he is. There are a lot of people who talk a lot of scriptures. They talk about the Bible. They want to give you spiritual advice and wise counsel. But they don't even know the voice of God for themselves. How do you know? Look at their life. Look at their lifestyle that they're living. But they want to tell you what to do. That's why. Please read. Give me an office. Genesis. Oh, this is good though. Genesis chapter 3, verse 8. Uh huh. What does it say? It says, And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. Now, 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 now the scripture said, Notice in Revelation chapter 1, notice the Bible said that John heard his voice in Revelation 1 and 10. John said, After the Spirit on the Lord's day, did he say that? He said, I heard the, a voice. Then he said, I turned. He didn't say, I turned to see who was talking. No, no, no. He said, I turned what? To see the voice. the voice. I turned to see the voice. Notice what it said in Genesis 3 and 8. They heard the voice. Is that what it is? They heard the voice. And the scripture said, the scripture said they hid themselves from the presence. Not from the voice, but from the presence. John didn't turn to see the person. He turned to see the voice. They didn't hide themselves from the voice. They hid themselves from the presence. The scripture said in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, he said, Behold, the Lord shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the trump of God, with the trump of the archangel, and the voice of God. The trumpet and the voice is the same thing. What Isaiah 58 and 1 say, Cry aloud, spare not, lift up your voice like a trumpet. So the sound is, brings clarity to the voice. The sound that you hear will make you understand who's talking. Look at somebody and say, look who's talking. I couldn't resist just the whole movie. Now, now understand, understand that that sound become clear, that sound becomes clear to you because you have become familiar with it. If you a prayer warrior, a prayer what? Warrior. That's something I gotta study on. A prayer what? Warrior. I guess that means like we got there ain't no prayer warriors in the Bible. Is it the term prayer warrior in the Bible? Anyone? Anyone? Bueller? No. The term prayer warrior might not be in the Bible, right? But the scripture said that, that, that our warfare, the weapons of our warfare, we, we, we make it work. We add, put it together. So it is, weave it, make it work. Y'all know about weave. So now uh, it looks real. Just a, okay, so a prayer warrior, a prayer warrior is one who wars in prayer. Yeah. Am I right or right? He wars in prayer. Now if you're warring in prayer, and you're a prayer warrior, then you will know the voice of God. Why? Because we communicate with God through prayer. Prayer is simply communicating with God. Whether you're speaking in tongues, whether you're crying, slobbing, snotting, or whether you're driving down the street talking to God, or whether you're just sitting up talking, you're still praying. If you're communicating with God, that's a form of prayer. That's why the Bible says man should always pray and not faint. Let me, let me interpret that for you. If man continues to pray, he won't faint. Man should 
should always pray in order that he won't faint. Because prayer is oxygen. It flows through the body. And if you don't have enough oxygen in the head, you will faint. So you got to keep praying. And then when you pray, let me tell you a very significant part of prayer. Something that if you have been haven't been doing this while you pray, you best start doing it now. Very significant part of prayer is shutting up. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Listening. Yes. Very significant part of prayer is yes. listening. Somebody walk in and you're an apostle and you're quiet. What you doing? I'm praying. I ain't hear you say nothing. You ain't got to hear me say nothing. I'm listening. If I'm talking to you and you talking and I'm listening, what you doing? I'm on the phone talking. I don't hear you say nothing because I'm listening. Don't just yap at God and don't let him say nothing back. Oh, I can't stand those phone calls. So I call you. I call you. And say, hey, how you doing? And before you even find out what I want, you're going to tell me all your business, everything you have talked for an hour. And you say, I got to go, Apostle Click. <laughs> now, I, I got your number. Right. But I didn't get to say nothing. How you think the Lord feel? You get on your knees and get that amen. Gone. The Lord is like, I didn't get to say nothing. So, prayer is two way. It's communicating. It's not me yapping at you or me talking at you and you not saying nothing back. That's not communication, people. That's not communication. That's me rambling. And that's what a lot of us do in prayer. We just ramble. We're not allowing God to minister to us. We're not allowing God to speak to us. And I'm going to tell you something. Please don't be offended, but if the shoe fit, wear it. When a lot of people spend time, these prayer warriors, they warring in prayer. And oh, Lord, I get up every morning at 4.30, oh, and I'm warring in prayer. Hallelujah. And I'm deep into my prayers. Oh, Lord. But I'm meaning to rattlesnake. Got a bad attitude. Can't get along with nobody. But when 4.30 in the morning come, I'm on my knees. I hope you repented. What kind of folk is that? Oh, the they prayer warriors can't get along with nobody. The Lord got along with everybody, whether it be a person and a millionaire or a bum under the bridge. Why are we spending so much time in prayer but our attitude is nasty? Please read something. Oh, that was good. That was read that good. verse again. <laughs> what is that? Genesis 3 and 8. Genesis 3 and 8. Uh, and they heard the voice of the And they the heard the voice of the Lord. They heard. Now check this out. Here's something significant about this. They heard the voice of the Lord. How they know it was God's voice? How they know? They heard it before. Apparently, they heard it before. It wasn't the first time God came talking to Adam in the cool of the day, was it? Nope. It wasn't the first time. I believe it was a daily ritual. Yes. Well, God said, God told the angels, me and Adam ready to go kick it. I'll be back. I'll be back. Can God leave? Okay. That's no, okay. <laughs> anyway. Now, I know we, we say the Lord moved, but if the Lord moved, everything would stop happening. But if, if the Lord moved from one spot, man, please read, 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 read. And they heard read. the voice of the Lord, uh, the Lord God walking in the garden. No, they the heard the voice of the Lord walking. So God's voice has legs? <laughs> they heard the voice of the Lord walking. Can you hear? Yes. What does Silas say? Can you count? <laughs> so if you can understand, then you can dig it. Yes, yes. Yes, indeed. How many of y'all lived in Illinois before? Well, you lived in Illinois, they used to have signs for construction. The sign said, call before you dig. Dig. <laughs> y'all ever saw that sign? It said, call before you dig. Dig. That was an actual construction sign. All right. He said, they heard the voice of the Lord walking. So God's voice was moving yes. through the wherever they were. God, the voice of God came traveling. Yes. So the voice of God moves. The voice of God travels. So God Himself don't have to move, but His voice moves, and it, the, His voice contains His word. Yes. Oh, you better hear that. If I take my throat out and then go knock on your door and you say, "Who is it?" What is gonna say? Apostle. 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 <laughs> Who is this apostle? You look out and see a throat. I thought it was the possum. It is me. I'm, in, I'm back over here though, doing this. <laughs> Y'all feel that? So the voice of God is being controlled by God, and the voice of God is motion. It has motion to it. They heard the voice, and what, what does it say? They heard the voice of the Lord walking in the garden. When? In the cool of the day. In the cool of the day. He went God wait till it got cool. Mm -hmm. And he began to move. Read. And Adam and his wife hid themselves. They hid themselves. 
from the presence of the Lord. From the presence of the Lord. Amongst the trees of the garden. Why they hide? Well, one reason why they hid, because they were afraid. Another reason why they hid, because they were naked. Yes. Another reason why they hid, because the voice of God didn't sound the same. Mm -hmm. Oh man, you better get that. God's voice sounds different depending upon your location. Yes. They were located in a different place. They were in a place they'd never been before. And when you get out of the will of God, the voice of God might sound like thunder. It might sound muffled. It may sound like a bunch of rambling because you're in the wrong place and you don't have no clarity. Notice when, who was that guy raised from the dead? Elijah? No, uh, uh, John? No, uh, Lazarus. When the Lord rose Lazarus in Luke chapter, St. John chapter 11, when the Lord rose Lazarus from the dead, notice when he spoke, when he spoke to God and God spoke back, he said, Lord, I know you always hear me. He said, thank you because you always hear me. He said, I'm not praying to you because I'm doubtful. I'm praying to you because of these suckers around here. Can't trust. I mean, he didn't say that. But he said, these folk around here can't trust you. That's why I'm praying. And the Lord spoke back to him. He said, son, I glorify the name of him. I glorify it again. And now that's what the Lord heard within the people here. They said it's time like thunder. Why? Because of their location. They were standing right next to Jesus, but they were located in a different spot because they weren't in the spirit and he was. Yes. Am I right or right? Yes, sir. That's the vibration. Like the vibration. An earthquake, an earthquake hit somewhere. You might feel it different, close to it. Ooh. Else, the, the, you know what I'm saying? The effects of it. I got something better. If the earthquake hit, you'll feel the vibration that if you're closer to it. Lord just spoke to me through my son. <laughs> yes, brother. I was just going to say they were probably totally thrown off because I, I imagine there was no rain forecast. Come on, and, thank you. You know, there was no reason for right. thunder. So I'm pretty sure somebody had to fall off their chair or whatever. Right. If they were standing, they fell over, they hid, you know? Could you imagine that? Nice sunny day and you hit thunder. No, no clouds. Isn't that crazy? No clouds, kind of like Mississippi. It can rain on one side of the street. I saw that. It's raining across the street. Look at that. I'm like, man, where we at? We're in Mississippi. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, the voice of God it sounds different depending on where you're located. So then they were in sin, so they heard a big thunder or some clap, and they ran. Because usually when God came to talk to Adam, and God says, you're God, Adam said, stop. Mm -hmm. I'm good. But this day he ran because he was afraid, but he didn't recognize that sound. It was a new sound. It was a new sound. He didn't have, he wasn't tuned in by the Spirit. Yeah, no longer his. Let me say this. The Holy Spirit is our hearing aid. Come on. Yes, indeed. Yes. Oh, it amplifies and clarifies. The Holy Spirit amplifies and clarifies the voice of God. It brings understanding. You wouldn't have to be in the front or the back. You got to be located where? John said, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. When you're in the Spirit, it doesn't matter what location you are. As long as you're in the Spirit, you can be in Russia, you can be in China, you can be in England, you can be in OH Fold. If you're in the Spirit, you will understand what God is saying. Because you're in the spirit, you're located in the right place. You're spiritual. And the sound will sound familiar to you. Why? Because I have been in communication with my creator. And so I love talking to people. I love talking to folk who, who tell me silly things. I don't tell them it's silly. I'm telling y'all that it's silly. And don't tell nobody. It's private between us. Don't tell nobody, okay? People on Facebook, if you tell somebody, I'm coming to dig the house. Okay, now, listen to this, this. I love talking to folk who say stuff like, uh, well, the Bible is written by men. I don't believe it. Actually, when you say that, not dumb, you sound, you sound like my sister called him a duck or not. I don't even know what that is. It just sounds real stupid. And Robin, and Robin said, duck or not, you're a duck or not. That sounds real dumb, you know? So, so, so how dumb can you be if you say, I don't believe the Bible because it was written by men? Mm -hmm. You know, a person will say that after they've written the book themselves. But they want somebody to buy that book, but it was written by a man. Mm -hmm. And also, you don't want to hear it because it's written by men. Really? Have you ever been to school? Mm -hmm. Did you ever read a book? Guess who wrote it? Man. And you got a diploma, you got a degree, you got a certificate. Guess who wrote those books? A man. 
You know why? Because God is using the creature that's created in his own image and after his own likeness. The Bible said that the prophets spoke in time past and they were moved on by the Spirit. So the Spirit of God will lead you to talk. The Spirit of God will lead you to write. The Spirit of God will lead you to preach. So then, I don't want to hear it because it's coming from a man. What, what are you? A man. Trying to rest. What is it? God breathed. Right. God breathed. The yeah. ruach. So then you would feel better if it was written by a horse. Is a horse? Of course. <laughs> of course. They called him. Mr. Ed. Mr. Ed. So you'd be better if Mr. Ed wrote it? I love the scripture that Mr. Ed wrote. What does it say? <laughs> I'm just saying, people. We say the stupidest thing. Ignorant people say the most dumbest things. Amen. Y'all miss that? No, no, I get no. Yeah. Yeah. Children. Children say the most darn. Yeah. All right, let's read another verse. First, first Kings 1841. I'm almost done with my introduction. First Kings 1841. What does it say? Hear this. Hear this is Elijah talking now, right? Now Elijah prayed, and he prayed that it would not rain. And it didn't rain for how long? For three years, right? Notice those numbers three, number seven, number eleven, number twelve, number ten, number forty. Notice those numbers in the scripture. I was preaching about numbers once, and the lady left the service. He believes in numerology. Ah! I told you, you too. You celebrate your birthday every year, don't you? Don't you? Don't you? You celebrate Christmas on the 25th, don't you? You believe in numerology. That's stupid. Don't you know that God created everything, including numbers? Yes. He only created what, nine numbers? And all the rest of our combination of those nine is a nine numbers of ten. It's not, well, How many numbers God created? Zero, zero, one, number? two, three, four, no, five, it's six, it's seven, eight. It's, it's ten. ten. Zero, it's zero is a number, it's ten. Zero is a number, right? Yes. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's ten. It's ten numbers. Oh, because the zero, the one, and the zero make ten. Yes. Why y'all trying to make me look stupid? <laughs> oh, video. I knew that. I was just trying to check, make sure y'all was up the part. All right. First Kings 1841. What is that? First Kings 1841. And Elijah uh -huh. said unto Ahab, uh -huh. Get thee up. Now he said to who? Ahab. Ahab. Oh, that's a story right there, but I ain't got time. Read. Elijah said to Ahab, what did he say? Get thee up. Uh -huh. Eat and drink. Uh -huh. For there is a no, sound. No, 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 no. It hadn't rained in three years. It hadn't rained in three years. God used a man, I'm sorry that he didn't use a cow, but he used a man to shut up the heavens and had rain for three years. Elijah said, Ahab, get up, eat, drink. Why? For there is a sound of abundance of rain. I hear the sound of what? The abundance of rain. Did he say it's getting ready to rain? He said, I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. I hear the sound. And I, I promise you, when he said that, I bet it wasn't a cloud in the sky. But Elijah was way ahead. He was way ahead. And he was hearing before people because he was in the right spot at the right time. He had the spirit tuned in right. He was in the right frequency. And he could hear God before other people. A lot of times, you know, you say something, but man, he, man, he's before his time or she's before her time. What does that mean? That means that this person is operating in a realm that hadn't arrived to the earth yet. So when he said, I hear the sound of the abundance of rain, he was hearing from a place that hadn't arrived on earth yet. That's how we are when we're spirit-led. You hear things that other people haven't heard yet. Are y'all here? Mm -hmm. Can you hear? What are you hear? Read. I hear the sound of what? Is that the whole yeah, verse? It's a ring. Yes. Go to Acts chapter 9. We're trying to get done. Acts chapter 9. Acts chapter 9. What is it? Chapter start verse 1. And Saul, uh -huh. yet breathing out threatenings oh, and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest uh -huh. and desired of him letters to Damascus. Saul said, look, high priest, you got these folk over here. They're called Boway. They're called the Nazorians. And uh, they weren't called Christians. Apostle. Somebody rule me in. <laughs> don't mess with that, okay? They were called the Way and Nazorians. And he said, he said, I want papers, high priest, because I want to go to Damascus and I want to put them in the trunk. I'm going to shoot them. I'm going to cut them off. So I'm going to bring them back. Dead or alive. Because they're preaching against the government of Rome. Read. And desired of him led us to Damascus, uh -huh. to the synagogues. Uh -huh. Oh, to what? To the synagogues. Give me some synagogue letters so I can walk in during Sabbath and say, hold up. 
He don't want he won't let us to the church. It's kind of like if the police walk in here now, they got a court order. Yep. They said, um, I said, look, we have the service, y'all gonna leave. No, we got court order back. Everybody here believe in Christ, follow me. Right? Yep. Paul said, I'm on papers to go into the synagogue. Now, I know I've been preaching all these years, and I never saw that. Read. That if he found any of this way. If he found any of this way, uh huh, what are you gonna do? Whether they be men or women. Oh, wait, wait, now? Wait a minute. Women weren't allowed to do nothing. Why are they messing with the ladies? Paul said, look here. Ain't like that. If you believe in Christ, I ain't thinking about your gender. Paul didn't even know that a few years later he was gonna write and say there's no male or female in Christ. Maybe that's how he knew. Yeah. Read. He might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. Uh huh. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus. He almost got to Damascus. What happened? And suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. There was a light from heaven shining around about him. Read. And he fell to the earth. Now, now you know, I'm thinking it might have been dark outside. I don't know. If it was the sunlight, I think the light of God might have outshone the sunlight. Oh, yeah. All right, we're going to go with daytime. Read. And he fell to the earth. He fell to the earth. And heard a voice saying unto him. And heard a voice, and he heard the voice. What did it read? Saying, saying unto him, uh -huh. Saul, Saul, why, why? persecutest thou me? Uh-huh. What did the voice say? Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Yeah. Now, I just got a question, Bible students. This is a quick Bible study. If you know, raise your hand. What language did he speak to Saul in? Do you know? Did he speak Greek? Did he speak Latin? Speak Hebrew, we speak Paleo, what do we speak? Aramaic. Who knows? The language that he spoke to Paul in. Was it Aramaic? Was it Aramaic? What language did he speak to Paul in? You know, Pastor Mother. Don't, don't mess up now. Mouth it to me. You said too much. That's a whole <laughs> sentence. <laughs> it's a whole sentence. I can't get it. Okay, now, now let me tell you what language he spoke to Paul in. If you look at Acts chapter 20, 21, 22, when Paul is giving an account of this event, he said, I heard a voice. <clears throat> Speak to me how? Find it. Acts 22. When Paul was giving the account of his conversion. Is it Acts 22? When Paul said, I heard a voice speak to me in the... Y'all don't know that verse? You know, I know you know what it is. What do you say? He said, I heard a voice speak to me. How? I'm going to tell you why this is significant. Because of who cares what language? Let me tell you something. Everything in the Bible is significant. And you need a magnifying glass. What did David say? Oh, magnify the Lord with me. You got it, Pastor Bobby? I got it, but it doesn't say what language. <coughs> it says, um, and th this is actually. I'll find it. Okay. I'll find it. I shall find it. And I heard a voice say Thank God for technology. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know people on Facebook like, I know where it is. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. I can't type fast enough. I'm just going to tell y'all. Y'all look it up and find it. Paul says, I heard a voice speak to me in the Hebrew tongue. Okay. Find that. Where is that at? Acts 19? No, Acts 20, 21, 22. Find that. Which says, I heard a voice speak to me in the Hebrew tongue. He's speaking of his conversion. Now, why is that important? It's important because Paul spoke about 14 languages. That's what the rumor is. Y'all ever heard that before? They said Paul spoke about 14 languages. Why did God speak to him in the Hebrew tongue? Oh, man, it's a whole other message. But he heard the sound. What verse is that, Pastor Bob? You got it? Uh, yes, actually, it's Acts 21 40. I guess I would have had to go down. What did it say? Um, speak. Hallelujah. I'm looking at 21. Uh, it says, and when he had given them license, Paul stood on the stairs and beckoned. Well, nope, that's him speaking. 26. 26. Acts 26. Yeah, oh, there it is. Okay. Acts 26, 14. Thank mm -hmm. you, uh, prophet. And when we were fallen to the earth, I heard, the voice the I heard a voice speaking unto me uh -huh. and saying in the Hebrew tongue. Show, show, peace be up, Now, why did he speak it in Hebrew? Why did he speak it in Hebrew? And Paul. New 14 languages. Oh man, I, I'm trying. That's another subject. I'm trying to get. But but yes, man. That was his original language. That was the that was the original language of the scriptures. Yes. And Paul he spoke to 
Paul through the origin or from the ancient time or from the beginning. So he said, why are you persecuting me? And, and now check this out. The guys, go back to Acts chapter 9. The guys that were with Paul were astonished. Why? Because they heard a sound, they heard a voice, but they didn't see nobody. Look what it says? Acts chapter 9. Keep reading. Read verse 4. Uh, verse 4. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Uh -huh. Read. Verse 5, and he said, Who art thou, Lord? He said, I am. He said, Eh, hey, yeah, Yahushua. I am Yahshua, whom you persecute. Read. All right, verse 6. Uh -huh. And he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise, and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. Read. Verse 7. And the men which journeyed with him stood speechless. They stood what? Speechless. What? Hearing a voice, but seeing no man. They were tripping in modern day language. They said, I know we hear somebody talking. Mm -hmm. And I know they didn't look at the, nobody else. Did y'all hear that? They just played cool like you. Know. Yeah. Not only did they not see the man, they didn't see the light. They, they didn't see the light either? No. Read. It didn't say they saw light. <laughs> okay, so they just heard the voice, yeah. but they didn't see nobody. And I don't know if they were saying, hey man, did you hear that? Or did they just play it off? You know, you just play it off. You be in dark, you hear yeah. on the floor, you don't say nothing, you don't look, just act like, act like you didn't hear nothing. So, so they heard the voice though. My, my point being, they heard the sound. Paul heard the voice, and when he said, who are you? He said, I am the Lord, whom you persecute me. Mm -hmm. But Paul heard that voice. So from that point forward, Paul knew the voice of the Lord. Uh, let me see. One more verse. We got one more verse or no? No, but you can add one if you want. Okay. Now, I want you to hear this. Understand that the, the Spirit of God is our hearing aid. You hear that? Yes. The Holy Spirit is our hearing aid. Yahshua said, take heed how you hear. The Spirit of God is our hearing aid. Mm -hmm. There's a scripture in the Old Testament. It actually says, it says, um, it speaks of God. And it says, Yahuwah Shema. We say in America, Jehovah Shema. In Hebrew, it's Yahuwah Shema. What does it mean? It means the Lord who hears. So not only do we hear him, he hears us. Are y'all here? And it's strange to say, are y'all here after you talk about hearing? <laughs> Can you hear? Can you hear? Understand that. He's Jehovah Shema, the Lord who hears. Samuel. Mm -hmm. Samuel. Look up the name Samuel in the Hebrew. Tell me what it means. Samuel. Samuel was eight years old. And he heard a voice. Did he not? How many times did he hear a voice? Three times. He was eight years old. And he heard a voice with Eli. He said, Eli, why do you keep calling me? And Eli said, I ain't called you not one time. He said, the next time you hear that, say, yes, look. And Eli knew. He knew that Samuel was being called of God. What does Samuel mean? You got it? S-A-M-U-E-L. Yes. Mm -hmm. Give me the Hebrew interpretation of it. What does it mean? Yes. 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 It means the Lord has heard. Shemuel. That's how you say it in Hebrew. Shemuel. It means God has heard. So Samuel heard the voice of the Lord, and his name was God has heard. And you know, Samuel is one of the people, in, there's some people in the scripture who like, you got Solomon. This is, not, this is off topic, but Solomon was the wisest man until Yahshua came. Am I right or right? The scripture said he was the wisest man that ever lived. It was true when it was written until Yahshua came, because he said a wiser than Solomon is here. But Solomon was so wise, but he died in shame. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? All these people, Hezekiah, got 15 more years from the Lord, then he climbed. You got Jeremiah who was scared, he ran and hid. All these people were afraid. Notice Samuel is one in the scriptures that had a clean record. Samuel had an undefeated record. Chosen by God. Called by God. Set aside. How many of y'all set aside? Amen. Set aside by God. You know the voice of the Lord. You hear it with clarity. Now, 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 this is my last, my last point here. I'm on point number three. My last point. Okay? I heard that you're preaching a message unless you got a three point sermon, five point right. sermon. So this is my this is my fourth point. I got it, I got it written down. I ain't gonna show y'all. Okay, my fourth point. All right, fourth point is this: there are more than one way. There's several ways to hear.
hear from God. Yeah. It ain't just me hearing from God by myself. The Lord spoke to me. What did he say? My son. No, come on now. He might say that. Sometimes you will hear audible. I heard an audible voice before, back in the 80s. I heard that audible voice, and it, it, it didn't sound like James Earl Jones. It didn't, you know, I know that's, you know, that's what we imagine. But I heard an audible voice, the Lord spoke to me out loud. And he said, son, be of good cheer. Your sins are forgiven. Spoken to me out loud while I was driving. Because I did something I had no business doing. I was mean to somebody. I mean, I was really mean too. I wasn't messing around. I was acting like John Ray. I, was, I wasn't playing. <laughs> you know that bus driver? <laughs> I wouldn't play. I was like, I was mean. I was being real mean, you know. And what happened? I I I felt so bad. I felt so bad. And I told this person I was sorry. I told her, I said, Relina, I mean, whoever I was talking to, I said, I said, I'm so sorry for the way I've been talking to you. I know I'm wrong. And she forgave me. She said, Okay, I forgive you. And I dropped her off at work. And I felt horrible, Pastor Bobby. On the way, I'm driving, and I got tears in my eyes. I'm like, Oh Lord, Jesus, what have I done? And I got tears in my eyes. And the Lord speaks to me, and the sound that filled my whole car. The son, be of good cheer. Your sins are forgiven. What? So I've heard the audible voice before. So now, how do you hear from God? You might hear an audible voice. That's true. How else can you hear from God? The word of God. You open your Bible up, yes. and you will hear. Now, y'all might not believe this, but I'm just going to say it because it's true. When I got home from dropping her off, and the Lord spoke to me, I opened my Bible up because we didn't have these. We didn't have none of this stuff right, back then. This was 1985. Nobody 85 did. It was 1984 because she still had a baby in her stomach. Call me back. Now, but when I got back home, I opened my Bible up and I just opened it randomly. And I looked out. You know what I saw? Son, give good cheer. Your sins are forgiven me. You're talking about messing somebody up. How many of y'all been messed up by the Lord before? He will mess you up in a good way. So you will hear from God audibly sometimes. You will hear from God through his word. What else? What other kind of way can you hear from God? From somebody else. Some people. That's the part we don't like. We don't like that part. But God will use the person who you can't stand right now to give you a word. And you miss it because you look at the word about their flesh. I heard she was talking about me last week. Now she going to prophesy out of me. No, she not and, and God can be using her just to test your character. Yes. Yes, sir. He used people who we, that is so true. You think it's disqualified. And God will use them to speak. I, I, I don't like that, but God does that. The Lord will speak to you through somebody. You ain't feeling good about that person right now. And they'll say, you know, I believe you are, blah, blah, blah. You shut up. You don't tell me what to do. But that's God talking. He used people. Yes. Give me another way God speaks to you. Okay, oh, the audible voice through the word of God. Use people. How? Situations in nature. You speak you through situations in nature. You, you, you know, I was driving in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and I'm praying, and I'm saying, Lord, and I'm throwing, I'm telling you now, this is a long time ago. All right, I was immature, but God met me in my immaturity. I said, Lord, I'm driving through Brown Deer, Wisconsin, in Milwaukee. And I said, Lord, if I just, I, I, I'm feeling bad. I said, Lord, if I just see, if you just let me see a couple of deer. Just can I see a few deer? And I just know. And I, and I saw a buck with the biggest antlers walk right across the street in front of me. And now I know y'all said, you're in Milwaukee. You're going to see some deer. But I hadn't seen none for weeks. And I prayed that the deer showed up. I know how, anyway. <laughs> they got an Old Testament term for that. You know what it's called? It's called a fleece. Yeah. It's called a fleece. All right? Hallelujah. How's your ears? Are your ears sharp? Are your ears sharp? You had to have sharp ears. You got to have sharp ears to hear. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise. A hand of praise. Why did he speak to Balaam's Yeah, Exactly. Exactly. He spoke through Balaam. But what did he tell? What, what did the donkey say? He said, don't he you say, say oh, First of all, let's quit water. Let's, let's stop what Say what it is. Say, say what it said, son. What did it say? He spoke through Balaam. I, I, I can't say it. <laughs> it's in the Bible. I know it's in the Bible, but I can't say it. He spoke through, the Bible called it a dumb donkey. But it ain't what the Bible said. 
He called him a dumb ass. Pass, pass by the cuss, not me. So now, <laughs> why do you say dumb? Because dumb means to talk. Right, right, yes. So God spoke through a donkey. He confirmed his word through a rooster. Did he not? Yes. He confirmed his word through a rooster. What's that? When the cock crows. Yeah. Yeah, before the cock crows three times. Yep. You know, before the cock crows, you're denied me three times. Yeah. So, so God speaks to us several different ways. But if we're not spiritually mature, we won't be sharp enough to discern that God is talking. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Who say it again? I said so, add animals. Right, added animals. Because God, uh, I think Pablo said nature. So, so we have to know when God is talking. I know when God is talking. Sometimes your nature may be on test. Yes. Your character may be on test. I gave a homeless guy back back in uh, like 1987, 88. He was a homeless guy. I was at the gas station. And he was a bum, and he was a, uh, you know, he had a sign out. And I told him, I said, come here. He walked into the car, and I gave the guy five dollars, five dollar bill. 1988, 89. That's big money yeah. for a bum. Yeah. I had my five dollars out the window. That's a body. God is my witness. This bone is snazzy money. He snatched it from me like I owed him some money. My flesh said, God, car, get your money back. And I, I heard the voice of the Lord. The Lord said, chill. The Lord spoke to me and he said, chill. Because you know what well, God was letting me know that if I have assigned you to give him $5 about how he receives it, ain't none of your business. I was ready to get on down. Yes, ma'am. Yes. receive it but the second part of it is 
I got a word for myself. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to be moved just because you want me to do something. Mm -hmm. When the Lord has spoke to me specifically and told me to stay put. Uh -huh. You can hit me, you can poke, you can pry, but he told me to stay here. He told me that donkey, so don't move. move. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> yes, man. That donkey well, saved Balaam's life. Uh-huh. But most people don't know that. That's my point. They mm -hmm. are looking at someone from where they used. If you knew me 20 years ago, I'm not the same 20 years ago. Right. It's not my fault that you didn't grow. Right. Come on now. Where God is, That's you need to grow up. It's right. Yeah. And look here, folks, as we close, there were people on Facebook, as this church of yeah. uh, uh, Sunday school. Mm -hmm. Look here. This is what, this is called information. Who said on Sunday morning you got to go, Wah! can't nobody talk? You can ask me all the questions you want while I'm preaching. If I'm in the middle of, ah, you raise your hand, I'm going to stop and hold that one half for later. Now, now, check this out. The Lord spoke to me once about Apostle Melvin Brown. Remember Apostle Brown, right? Apostle Brown, um, I hadn't seen him in a few years. And we was in a soup store where, where um, some people from his church worked at. And Apostle Brown started talking to me. And I, and I said to myself, I said, oh, Apostle Brown, I grew up. And the Lord spoke to me in that second and said, no, you have. Hmm. I'm like, okay, Lord, you know what? I'm done with you right now. <laughs> the Lord said, no, Apostle Ron hadn't grown up. You have. Meaning that he's speaking the same language. You just didn't understand it. Man. Right. Yes, and I know how I know how you feel. Right. right. So now, yes. one thing, as we close, one thing about men, I'm going to say this, one thing about men, we'll be lost and we won't even tell y'all. Nope. We'll just keep driving. Because mm -hmm. we proud. You know, you got, I got this. <laughs> we'll keep driving. And we'll keep on going as if we know what we're doing and what we are because we are man. We ain't supposed to be lost. Mm -hmm. What did God tell Abraham? Listen to the voice of thy wife. Say, <laughs> like, oh, Abraham, Abraham, I'm driving. I got this. But we'll be lost. We won't say nothing. Meaning we hear the voice of God and we'll keep going. Mm -hmm. God speak. Just we'll ignore it. Keep on moving. Women are sensitive. They're sensitive. They're emotional. Eve was inside of that. His emotions were in him. When Eve came out, all hell broke loose. Okay. Uh, anyway, um, so, so, uh, so the word of God is a great way to hear from God, but there's other ways. Mm -hmm. Right? Let's give the Lord a hand. That means. Hallelujah. Lord, Lord, Jesus.